we are getting some pretty stark collateral tightening and seeing it from a lot of different key angles, including some eye-opening moves from U.S. primary dealer banks, as well as foreign reserve managers' cash positions at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Even the four-week T-bill rate took a dip, and swap spreads, well, they've dropped pretty sharply. There is a substantial and widespread tightening reverberating throughout the Eurodollar world the past couple of weeks. Now, it's the first noteworthy one in collateral since last year, and it comes at a time when rates are going lower with or without central bankers. It started with the European elections, and maybe even the ECB's rate cut, which by themselves shouldn't produce this kind of world-spanning backlash. In truth, this isn't about elections or just Europe. It's a sudden bout of uncertainty that showed up amidst other concerns. Why did the ECB cut rates again? This suggests more fragility, which may be the financial egg of 2024 is starting to crack. To see many of these cracks appear in such widespread fashion demands our attention and closer scrutiny. It may have started in Europe, but only a couple weeks on, it sure hasn't stayed in Europe. But let's start in Europe anywhere, because that's where everything goes back to. The elections earlier this month, which produced a backlash in the bond market, and the bond market produced higher spreads, and higher spreads in European bonds oftentimes correspond and correlate with global collateral and therefore monetary conditions. In the immediate aftermath of the election results, you saw European bonds sell off across the board, German, French, Italian, basically all of them. But then around June 13th, German bonds were bid, those rates went down, while French and to an extent Italian bonds were not. So French bonds were up in yield, German bonds down. The spread between the two 10-year rates got as high as 76 basis points as of last Friday. It looked last week like maybe these spreads were going to calm down, but then big jump on Friday. We're already seeing the reverberations throughout the global, global monetary system. But you have to ask, I mean, what does all of this European stuff have to do with collateral? Well, it does have direct global euro dollar links and produces direct global euro dollar problems. Every time spreads like these blow out, it causes issues for European banks. In this case, French, Euro French European banks or European banks that are French. At the very least, French banks would fall under increasing suspicion. We've seen French bank stocks really drop pretty sharply since this all started to take place. In fact, they've dropped so sharply that French authorities and even some ECB and European authorities are beginning to make statements reassuring the general public there's nothing to see here with France's biggest banks. The governor of the Bank of France, Francois Villeroy de Gallo, I have no idea if I pronounced that right, said just yesterday, French banks are very solid in their liquidity as well as in their capital, and these strengths have not been in any way affected by the recent moves in stock exchange due to political uncertainty. And it's not really due to political uncertainty, it's about fears of liquidity spillover because bond spreads lead to monetary tightening, it has nothing to do with central banks, bad problems that become global collateral problems. From the other's perspective, you also see a lot of times European banks, especially the bigger banks, will borrow in U.S. dollars and swap them back into euros. And they're borrowing U.S. dollars because they can make a spread on, on U.S. dollars because U.S. dollars tend to be in high demand and might be in, in tight supply. So European banks are supplying dollars by borrowing them from somewhere else and then swapping back into euros. And in the euros, the euro leg, they just they want to leave them in some safe and liquid instrument like, say, German bonds or, up until recently, French oats. And leaving those dollars out there in the euro dollar system circulating all, all across the world. And if there's less European banks circulating dollars on the euro dollar system, you're going to see consequences in terms of monetary tightening all throughout the rest of the monetary system. Starts in Europe, but it doesn't end in Europe. This is a globally connected system. So with that flight to safety on one side and a blowout in key spreads, no wonder there's rising demand for liquidity, liquid instruments, therefore pushing rates down all across the marketplace. And that's something that we're going to talk about on Friday, this Friday, which is June 28th at 6.30 p.m., as we launch our anniversary sale at Eurodollar University. Now, it's important to understand where all of this is actually coming from. There's economic concerns. There are financial concerns. There's obviously global concerns and all of these together, monetary concerns. 
And this webinar is just a glimpse of what I write every day at our deep dive analysis. In fact, this is taken from a deep dive analysis, as well as my daily updates and my daily briefing. And behind all of that, we have memberships available with all of the key background material. Now you can sign up right now for a webinar this coming Friday. There's a link in the description and I'll let you know about the Eurodollar University anniversary sale as we get closer to launching it. So again, I hope to see you this Friday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. There's a link in the description. So with European bond spreads blowing out, we're seeing the blowback across the global Eurodollar system, including in some key statistics that we monitor, starting with something called the foreign repo pool. Now the foreign repo pool is an accommodation that the Federal Reserve Bank of New York has offered for a very, very long time. This is the original reverse repo. They offer this accommodation to foreign governments and reserve managers to store cash balances in New York. So back in the old days, they wouldn't have to repatriate cash and go back and forth. It's much easier because in a globally, globally connected world, you're gonna need US dollars, you're gonna need US dollar payments. So why not leave it with the Federal Reserve Bank of New York? Therefore, you create a liquidity buffer and hold a liquidity buffer in the United States. What we've seen over the last 15 years, really going back to September 2008, is that reserve managers, when they get very nervous about conditions in the Eurodollar world, will hold larger balances with this reverse repo in the foreign repo pool because they want to hold a higher liquidity buffer. In fact, it was Simon Potter in February of 2016, who was then the head of, of the Federal Reserve's head of markets group at Federal Reserve Bank of New York, who basically said, yes, this is what's going on in the foreign repo pool. At that time, foreign repo pool balances were surging. The Fed had removed caps on it, which meant that counterparties could hold as much liquidity as they wanted to with the Federal Reserve. But the reason why they were doing so was because, well, here's what Potter said. Use of the pool has increased because over time, the constraints imposed on our customers' ability to vary the size of their investments have been removed. But the supply of balance sheet offered by the private sector to foreign central banks appears to have declined, basically a dollar shortage, and some central banks desire to maintain robust dollar liquidity buffers. So when dollars get tight among the private system participants out there in the euro dollar world, central banks like to hold a larger liquidity buffer, which we see in a rising foreign repo pool balance. And this goes all the way back to September 2008. You see a big spike in the foreign repo pool usage in September 2008 for obvious reasons. Bigger dollar liquidity buffer. August 2011, another crisis, dollar shortage, all this collateral shortage, everything that went on in 2011, euro dollar number two. We see it again, of course, the, the period that Potter was talking about, 2015 and 2016, euro dollar number three. The Fed removed the, the restrictions on customer size. So Reserve managers began using the foreign repo pool, building up a higher and higher dollar liquidity buffer. Uh, October of 2018, the landmine right on through 2019 and the repo rumble. Then more recently, September and October of 2022, you see a huge surge in the foreign repo pool. It has nothing to do with interest rates or changes in interest rates. As Potter said, foreign governments and central banks were maintaining and building a more robust dollar liquidity buffer because it was a global dollar shortage. The repo pool balance even stayed high right through the March 2023 banking crisis. And then more recently, it's begun building again since last November as the bond rally got started. It continued to rise until early January, then it dipped a little bit. And then more recently, reserve managers are building that, do that robust dollar liquidity buffer all over again. Uh, it's up $24 billion in the three weeks through June 19th to a record high $389.3 billion. So here we see a close relationship between turmoil in Europe, turmoil in European bonds, rising spreads. Suddenly, foreign central banks and reserve managers are holding much higher liquidity cushions in U.S. dollars at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Another really big indication, one that's really closer to home, is primary dealers and their tendency to hoard U.S. Treasury coupon instruments during these same periods where we see indications of tightening, especially collateral tightening, all throughout the Eurodollar world. This one has absolutely surged. It's up $31.6 billion in just the two weeks through June 12th, and $19.4 billion during the week of June 12th alone. At $216.3 billion, that's the most U.S. Treasury coupons that dealers have been hoarding 
since the worst two weeks of March of 2020. So a huge surge in dealer hoarding of coupons. If collateral becomes hard to get, it can impact a dealer's profitability by raising the cost of borrowing collateral from somewhere else. There's always a constant circulation of cash and collateral throughout the dealer system. And when collateral is hard to get, cash lending rates have to fall to make it worthwhile for collateral holders to part with their increasingly scarce collateral. So an increase in demand for collateral because other forms aren't being as accepted, such as French bonds, maybe some dealers start to become more defensive, building up a higher inventory of collateral so they don't get caught in the restricted flow. They don't have to fill a bond that they don't have because they've relent it to somewhere else, which can cause them economic losses, not credit losses, but economic losses where these dealer activities become less profitable. In order to protect themselves against that, that possibility, they might hold higher inventories of U.S. Treasury coupons. Some other dealers become more proactive. They hold higher inventories of coupons because they realize in a collateral shortage situation, there is profit to be made when you hold the thing that everybody wants to get their hands on. As Iosco said in July of 1999, this securities lending business might either provide a customer service or enable a firm to exploit market opportunities on a proprietary basis. A financial institution may, for example, borrow securities in the expectation that others will be shortly prepared to pay more to borrow them. So dealers might become more defensive, holding more collateral on their own to protect themselves against breakdowns across the system, while others become proactive, seeking out profit opportunities, realizing that a shortage of collateral and seeing a shortage of collateral start to develop will mean those who have collateral will be able to make a higher return on having it. So dealer hoarding of U.S. Treasury coupons goes way up during periods when we see euro dollar tightening and collateral shortages. And this, in this case, the last couple of weeks, we've seen dealer hoarding of treasury coupons indeed go way up. Another consistent coincident signal of ripples throughout the euro dollar system. And since we're looking at dealers hoarding U.S. Treasury coupon collateral, that also means we should be checking in on interest rate swap spreads. Even mainstream academic sources have finally realized that there is a connection between swap spreads in the marketplace and dealer holdings of U.S. Treasury coupons. Now, they get the reasons wrong. They think it has to do with too many treasuries, which is absolutely absurd in the current case and really pretty much all the cases because dealers aren't stuck holding treasuries they don't want. If they didn't want them, they could easily sell them in the marketplace. After all, the treasury market is once again experiencing another rally. So they could, if they're holding treasuries they don't want, they could sell them to somebody else who absolutely do want them. But instead, dealers are hoarding treasury coupons because of the collateral breakdowns that I just talked about. And that leads to other, other consequences and follow-on effects, such as lower swap spreads, or in this case, more negative swap spread, compression in spreads throughout the interest rate swap market, which interest rate swap spreads, because they're negative and because of what they are, they're already an indication of monetary breakdowns to begin with, which also includes a, an acknowledgement of collateral conditions as well. And we've seen the five-year swap spread, for example, that one tumbled right around June 13th, right when European bond spreads, the French spread was, was surging, suddenly US dollar interest rate swap spreads actually fell fairly sharply. And they've become the most negative since February at the five-year maturity. And it looks like the five-year maturity is already rolling over since May 1st, which, is, which coincides with the mini bond rally that we're experiencing around the world. The 10-year swap spread, that one as of yesterday was down to 40, minus 41.1 basis points, which is the lowest since the first week in January and among the lowest on record. So there's a pretty sharp reaction in interest rate swap markets, which at the 10-year maturity, which is a key maturity, tells us this is a substantial disruption in monetary flow and collateral flow. Even the 30-year swap spread, that one has been moving down toward recent lows going back to May 23rd, which raises a whole bunch of other questions. Maybe this isn't just about the European election. Maybe this has, has, it has tentacles and other sorts of problems that have been developing all across the euro dollar world with another sharp dip coincident to June 13th with the increase in spreads. In terms of other market signals, the four-week treasury bill yield. 
The four-week Treasury bill yield had been about 5.47% on the 14th, and it was still about 5.45% on the 17th before dropping by five basis points last week on the 18th. And a five basis point swing in any Treasury bill, especially the four-week Treasury bill, is a pretty sharp, is a pretty sharp move. It came back a little bit since then. It's been about 5.42 pretty much consistently. So We've even seen this at the last couple treasury bill auctions where prices have moved lower. At the same time, we're seeing all these other signals throughout the system. We've even seen a reaction in the tips market where treasury inflation protected securities, the breakeven rates have moved sharply lower during the same period in question, going back to around early June in the aftermath of the ECB's rate cuts on through the European election to the point their breakeven rates have moved in the opposite direction from oil prices. Tips break-evens often correspond pretty closely to changes in WTI because of obvious reasons since tips break-even get paid by the CPI, and the CPI is heavily influenced by oil prices. You don't usually see tips break-evens move in one direction and oil prices move in the opposite direction. But over the last couple weeks, since oil prices have rebounded on all the geopolitics and everything else, yet tips break-even rates have gone sharply lower along the same lines as everything else that we're talking about here. T-bill prices, T-bill rates, as well as swap spreads and dealer hoardings of U.S. Treasury coupons and the foreign repo pool. Even inflation break-evens have, have defied oil prices and moved lower, telling us that there is indeed something going on here, something substantial. The question is what that means and where it eventually will go. So it started out with just the ECB cutting rates as nothing more than a precaution. Then there was European elections, which was a little bit of a shock. And suddenly European bond rates were rising substantially. And then European bond spreads were blowing out. Then it was dealers hoarding coupons, reserve managers that were piling up the dollar buffers at Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Swap spreads are suddenly sinking pretty sharply. The T-bill rate, four-week T-bill rate is down. So it started out in Europe, but it has not stayed in Europe. We're getting these global ripples of collateral and euro dollar insufficiency that tell us that this is not just some small little matter with Europe's parliamentary elections. This should be nothing, but it has become something. The good news is that it isn't something huge, at least not yet, but it does suggest that there's an element of fragility in the entire system that we should not dismiss and overlook. Because it has gotten this far already, it tells us that there is a potential, should other forms of uncertainty get piled onto the system, it could become more than just a short-run curiosity. That's all it is right now. It's the first major collateral disruption we've seen in, in since last year. It could all blow over this weekend with the French election. If it really is about Europe and electoral prospects, then maybe that's the case. But if it continues, if there are other things, other forms of uncertainty and risk that get piled into there, then it would be pointing toward a more serious breakdown, something that we really need to pay close attention to. I asked a couple weeks ago if the ECB actually cut rates to influence these elections. And with the fallout that we've seen, you really have to wonder talked about that in the video link below. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Hope to see you Friday at our webinar, link in the description. Thank you to Eurodollar University members and subscribers. And until next time, take care.